Hi, I'm Evan, and I just finished first grade. Now I'm going to go to second grade. At yeah. Irving School. At Irving School. And I am Evan's dad, James Meredith, and today we're going to read a story. Um, and this story is called... The Tea Dragon Society. And it's written and illustrated by Katie O'Neill. Mm -hmm. The Tea Dragon Society. Written and illustrated by... Katie O'Neill. One. Spring. Once upon a time, blacksmiths were as important as magicians. They made tools for healers to cure the sick. Swords for adventurers to slay monsters. Shoes to shod the hooves of working animals. The world was forged in iron. Once upon a time, Greta, are you listening? Please pay attention. Shaping hot swords is dangerous work, even for those of us with goblin blood, as you well know. Sorry, I'll concentrate, I promise. You must wait for the exact right color. Do not let it get too hot, or the sword will become weak. And then strike. strike. What does that mean? Then that's when you hit it, when you hit it because it's hot and you hit the sword so that you're able to bend the sword in such a way so you can make it sharp. And now she looks a little confused, but she's watching her mom. Her mom is dipping it in and she's doing all the cool work. And she says, Um, Mama, do people use swords anymore? I thought they were just in store. Not so much these days, but they are beautiful objects, and they have a history. But they don't do anything. Is this a way of telling me you're not interested in learning blacksmithing? No, no, I am. I want to learn from you because you're the best at it. I am very good. Your father seems to have no trouble selling my work, even if people have no use for it. I am happy you want to learn. You have a gift, Greta. You formed your pact with Brick when you were just six. That's true. So she's holding her pet. And she remembers back when she was walking and she heard... And she heard it again. Squeak! Squeak! And again. Squeak! And she looks down um, uh, an alleyway and she sees a creature. And the creature is surrounded by what? Wolves! She says. Hey! And she sees that they're looking at her, but they are what? They're... Starving. They're really hungry. So she takes out some meat, and what does she do? Do, 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 do? What does she do? She gives it to the wolves. Right. And she says, Mama's going to be mad about the meat, but that's okay. No one deserves to starve. You'll be fine. I think your pride got hurt more than anything, huh? <gasps> Greta, I saw blood on the doormat. Are you all right? I'm fine, Papa. The blood was from this little thing. She's doing better now. I don't know who she belongs to, though. She seems like she wouldn't survive on her own. Oh, I know her owner. You do? I saw him tea leaves from time to time. He only buys the very best. He's a peculiar fellow, but I expect he'd be very grateful if you returned his dragon. He runs a tea shop just out of town. His name is Ezekiel. So she goes to the tea shop and she says, 
Hello, I think I have your... Jasmine, I thought you were gone. Uh, I hope you've learned never to run off in the marketplace. Tea dragons are not the sturdiest creatures. You must be the one who took care of her. My deepest gratitude. And she says... She's beautiful. I've never heard of a tea dragon before. They're very rare and difficult to take care of, but they produce a wondrous tea. See the leaves on her horns? We gradually harvest them to make a special brew. And she says... Jasmine? Tea dragons are usually mistrustful of strangers. They're a prized target for thieves. She never steal her, but I, I, well, I think I'd never mm -hmm. steal her, but I wish I had one. Hee <laughs> hee. Would you like to learn to take care of tea dragons like Jasmine? I'd love to. Then you are welcome here anytime. So she leaves out and she's walking and she runs into someone with a tea dragon. Interesting. <laughs> are you learning to take care of tea dragons too? And this person is looking at her but not really speaking. So Your she says, I know. Ezekiel just invited me to learn with him. Is that your own tea dragon? She still seems a little shy. Mm, now she's mad. It's okay, I'm not going to take him. Let's be friends. My name's Greta. And they look at each other, and she looks at her hand as Greta holds out her hand. And she says, I'm, I'm Manette. Manette. Jinx! Jinx! So they look at each other and... Jinx! We both said jinx together, I so I, we did a double jinx. Mm -hmm. And then, as soon as she's there, she's gone. And Greta is by herself. Ooh. Chapter 2. Summer. So, meanwhile, Greta's still working, working hard on that iron but it looks a little curvy. Her mom says, I used this technique to make a teapot once. A man commissioned it for someone named Ezekiel. Papa told me that you have met him. You know him too? We share a mutual, a mutual admiration for our crafts. And she says, Actually, he invited me to come learn more about tea dragons. But that was over a month ago, and I've been too nervous to go. Do you think it's too late now? Ezekiel is not like humans and goblins. He will live for more than twice our lifespan. And Ezekiel himself is one who values patience in all things. I think he would barely notice your hesitation. Meanwhile, she's still trying. Yeah. Oh, a bit curvy. <laughs> so she goes back to Ezekiel's place and she sees him working in the front. Hello, please go through the back if you'd like to meet the rest of the tea dragons. I must work on filling these orders, but Eric will introduce you. Okay. So she goes around to the back where she meets Eric. So you're the one who's keen on these rat bags. A brave soul to be sure. Mm. Greta says. They seem sweet. Aye, they can be if they know it'll get them something. Manipulative little buggers. I'm Eric, by the way. I'm Greta. Anyone has trusts with these drag with his dragon, I would trust with my life. Let me show you how to get these rascals preening and purring. You'll want a pair of these. If you rub them the wrong way, they're liable to take a nip of you. I 
can see why people don't really do this. Aye, it's a bit of a chore. At first, I thought it was far too much fuss for a bit of leafy water. Uh, don't tell Hess I said that. But I'll admit the tea is worth it. Not many people seem to think so, though. Harder and harder to find people interested in learning. Hess is so happy that you're keen. He doesn't want the knowledge to be lost. Meanwhile, look who's playing with her tea dragon. Looks like Minette. The same exact girl. And Eric says, hello, men. I was wondering where you'd been. Would you like something to eat? And she kind of nods. And look, she sees Greta. I just made leek and potato soup. I promise it turned out better than the last time I tried. Hey again. <laughs> Jinx! <laughs> Careful, it's hot. Thank you. So she leaves and she goes home and Greta says, What's up with her? Go spy Minette, though we haven't been able to find out much else about her. She turned up in town one day and didn't seem to have anywhere to go. Oh, she forgot her spoon. I can take it to her. And what happened over here, sometimes I get a bit confused. It's kind of like reading a comic book, this book. Yeah, where you go one a, side and you go back the other book. side. It is kind of a comic book. And earlier, it's, she talks about how she turned up one day and didn't have anywhere to go. And Eric says, Chamomile took such a liking to her that we offered her the tea house in the garden to nest up in. She's been here for a month or two. And that's when they find out about the spoon. And then Greta says she can take it to her. Mm. So she goes all the way to Minette's place in the garden. And she sees her there and she's drinking tea without a spoon. And Greta says, You forgot this. I thought I'd bring it out to you. She looks at her and Greta says, Thank you. No, she says. Eric mentioned that you only came to town a few months ago. If you want, I could show you some of the secret places I like. She looks at her, and they look at each other, and they don't say anything. <laughs> and Greta says, Never mind. Here's a spoon. She pets the little one, and Manette says, I, I would, would like that. that. Jinx. Jinx! Jinx, Jinx, Jinx! Oh, you won that time! You won that time! You won and that Greta time. says, Great, I'll meet you here tomorrow afternoon. And so she leaves her for the day, and tomorrow afternoon comes, and there they are. They're walking around, and Greta says, Wanna get a pastry? I don't have any money. That's okay, I'll get two. Thank you. No worries, you've really never been here. Wait, no worries. You've never, you've really never been here before? Have you ever left the tea shop? No, I'm scared I'll forget the way back. Forget? When I was small, I was training to become a prophetess. I have the gift of future sight. At least I used to. What? Pretty cool. Yeah. She's thinking back. Yeah. I was told I had great power and a duty to use it. So every day I tried to see more and more every future that could possibly exist but her mind is starting to get so crazed because she has so much in her mind trying to see the future. So she says, my mind was full to bursting. I burned out. To protect itself, my mind erased every memory I had, including the ones about me. Even now, I forget stuff easily. When you said, hey again, yesterday, I had already forgotten that we had met before. It's embarrassing 
and scary. Bennett, if you ever get lost, I'll come and find you. I promise. Thank you, Greta. She's crying. Yeah, but she's also <laughs> happy. She's met a real friend. Chapter 3. Autumn. <laughs> Chapter 3. Autumn. There we go. So, yeah, 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 yeah. so they're all sitting there. Mm -hmm. Looks like Eric, Greta, and Ezekiel. And they're teaching. It looks like they're teaching Greta how to get the leaves from the tea dragon. And she says... By not hurting them. Mm -hmm. This is kind of relaxing when they aren't trying to bite their fingers off. That's a good way to put it. That should have been our slogan. Slogan? What the slogan? Uh, it's kind of a saying that you give to uh, help people identify or know what your company does, right? Mm -hmm. So there's some delivery mail companies and their slogan would be, we deliver for you. So that's kind of their slogan. So whenever you hear that phrase, it always makes you think of that company. And so they're talking about a slogan for their company. And Ezekiel says, There was once a tea dragon society. Eric and I didn't start it. Nobody remembers who did. Sadly, we are the only remaining members. We found each other through our tea dragons. Everyone else in this photograph is either unable to care for them any longer or has passed away. This picture right here. So she's looking kind of concerned. And they're kind of sad as they think about those people who have passed. And Greta says, Didn't anyone else join? People seem to live at a different pace now. Tea dragon tea is a wonderful thing, but it takes a long time to make. Back when everything took longer to make, perhaps that didn't matter. Sadly, the art is fading. It won't be forgotten. And they kind of look at her with hope. And she goes home and says to her pet, Do you, do you think anyone else our age is learning blacksmithing? Brick is kind of quiet, doesn't really know what to say. Meanwhile, they're at home and it looks like some cooking is going on. Mm, looks like some cooking's going on. Whoa. Oh, soot. We have no seals for the jars. And Minette says, I'll go get some from the market. Are you sure, man? I'm pretty sure I remember the way. And if not, you'll come find me, right? And she looks at her. Mm -hmm. And she enough. nods. Mm -hmm. And then Minette goes off. And Ezekiel says, Greta. Right you have been working very hard with the dragons. We both feel your presence brightens this house. We think it's time you see what makes tea dragon tea special. If you'd like to. I'd love to. Very well. Mm -hmm. This is a special blend brewed from jasmine and rooibos. The dragons Eric and I have Jeez. had for many decades. Yep. If you clear your mind and concentrate, you may experience some of the memories the dragons have shared with us. Are you sure it's okay? We trust you, Greta. Which makes her smile. So... They pour out the tea into the water and they mix it up and she drinks the tea and in that tea she sees their history. She sees Eric, 
babbling valiantly. And then he's a bit hurt, it looks like. And then someone comes and helps him heal. And there's Eric and he's healed and he's able to fight these dragons or these this multi-headed creature. Yeah. And he's yeah. successful. But he says, I appreciate the help, but I'm guessing it wasn't free. Correct. I've been hoping someone would come and claim that bounty. Don't like getting your hands dirty? No, but I suspect you rather enjoy it. I'm looking for someone with a big sword. Guess that's me, all right. If you can keep working magic like that, I'm up for a deal. So they shake hands. And you can see how their friendship grows over time. Friendship grows and you grows see? and grows and grows. And grows. grows. And grows. You see that? And now here they are, and they're and just kind of hanging out uh, in the spring. And Ezekiel says, Not bad. Could be better, though. I heard a whisper of a bounty to end all bounties. I reckon we could take it, Hess. We're stronger together. I suppose it's worth a try. And now look, they come up against a really, really big enemy. This Ooh. one's not, doesn't look like three heads, but it looks like a very, very fierce monster. It, yeah, even bigger than the last one. And it looks like Eric's having a really tough time. And Ezekiel says, the spell is almost ready, Eric. And Eric says, got it. But just before he can get him the spell, this animal gets Eric in the back and makes him fall. And Ezekiel says, Eric! Goes over to Eric and he does everything he can to cure Eric. And this animal is still coming, but Ezekiel uses his power to beat away the animal, to beat away the monster. But he's grieving and he says, Eric, Eric. And now you move and then, forward. And that's, and, why, you, and that's why I have the wheelchair. And now he's in the wheelchair, but Ezekiel is nursing him back to help. And Eric is sad. And he says, this isn't what you signed up for. And Ezekiel says, I signed up to fight by your side, to treat your wounds, to never abandon you. You shouldn't have to give up exploring an adventure because of me. You loved that. It was never the adventure that I loved. You see that? They have a friendship that is more important than any adventure, right? Mm -hmm. And this is all that she was able to see and experience and guess what? while she was drinking and guess, the tea. Yeah, and guess what? If she drinks the tea, the tea she'll think her powers are back again. Well, uh, and every time she drinks that tea, mm -hmm. she'll see I think every time they drink that tea, that that's just one of the adventures. I see? think they'll see way more adventures. That's true, but only by sharing in the tea together and sharing mm -hmm. the experience of drinking that tea. Mm -hmm. So Ezekiel says, those were good days adventuring about with a big idiot and his sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But running this tea house turned into an adventure of its own. Come on, Chamomile. I'm sure it's this way. Remember where she went? She went to the market. Mm -hmm. 
and she might get lost. She's a bit nervous. But Greta says, I knew you'd get back on your own. Did I? The road out to the tea house is just around that corner. Oh, you're almost there. So let's move out of the way so that everyone can see the story. I'm so glad. I was pretty certain I had it, but it's strange, you know. Just as I was starting to get a little nervous, you showed up. And there they are, good friends. I think it's the next chapter. You are right. Chapter four. Winter. Chapter four. Winter. And it is winter. And they're staying warm and having some warm tea and sitting together. And it looks like Minette is writing a letter. And it says, Dear Mama and Papa, I'm sorry for taking so long to write you after I ran away from the monastery. I want to find out who I am when I don't have my gift anymore and what I want to do. I can only do this by myself, but I'm not alone. I have many good people looking after me and will be home as soon as I'm ready. Love, your Minette. It feels weird to write a letter to people I barely remember. I know that they love me though. Hopefully I can go home soon. Say, Greta, would you help me make tea from chamomile's flowers like Mr. Hezekiel did? Sure, haven't you tried it before? No, not yet. I've been too nervous to because of my memory. I was scared that even if I drank it, there'd be nothing to see, but I'm ready to try. All hope for sure. And there they go. They start to gently take some of the, the petals from chamomile and, and they put it in the tea drink it. and she drinks it and look what she sees. This is her history of how she met Eric and Ezekiel, and how she sat with Camomile, and how they spend time together, and good times that she spends together oh, with Oh, I think, I think it's different. Did yeah. you realize that it's different? So she has different memories that are all her own. Isn't that cool? Mm hmm So now, Greta says. Memories don't just live inside you, Manette. They live in all the people and objects you share your life with. Chamomile. Chamomile, Eric, Ezekiel, and me too. And look how that makes her feel. You are right, Greta. I lost so much and was scared of losing more. I didn't notice how many good memories I was making. I'm thankful I met you. And look, she gives her a kiss. Mm. Now it's still winter time. And look, there's Greta's mom. And she what sees her thinking? working hard in their house. And what is she making? A sword. And that sword looks pretty good. And she waits until the time is right. She has it in the fire. Bending? Mm-hmm. She bended it? And what she finished, it? and her mom says, Beautifully done, my love. I am happy you seem to be excited to use the forge again. And Greta says, I don't want blacksmithing to be forgotten. I want to keep making objects for people to love and give them a story. Maybe one day, someone will think about who gave it to them, or where they brought it, or who they shared it with, or who owned it long ago. That's a kind of magic, isn't it? 
I believe it is. And what? What does this say? Apology. It's, that's a tough one. It actually says epilogue. And what that is, is what happens after the original story is over. So we get to find out a little bit more about this story. Let's see what's next. They saw each other again, and Greta says, I want to make something for you both. And thanks for teaching me about... Teaching her Teaching and Manette about tea dragons. As thanks for teaching me and Manette about me tea dragons. Me and Manette about tea dragons. And she gives her... He, she gives them this awesome teapot. And Ezekiel says, Greta! It's beautiful. Thank you. Funny that. We actually have something for you too, Greta. If you'd like to receive it. <gasps> A tea dragon. This is Ginseng. Her owner sadly passed away and there was no one left to care for her. She needs a caretaker. Would you like to be one, Greta? But look at her. She, she doesn't look happy. She's so sad. Tea dragons get very attached to their companions. It may take her a while to bond with you. And even then, she will still require diligent care and attention. You don't have to take on the responsibility, Greta. I want to. I want to make good memories with all of you. And with Ginseng, too. With Ginseng, too. And with Ginseng, too. That's an interesting name, huh? Mm-hmm. And they look pretty happy. Now that we each have a tea dragon, I reckon we could call ourselves a society again. What do you think? I think that would be wonderful. And they all look very happy, right? <laughs> I like this story music. And look at them. They're all spending time together with their tea dragons. Isn't that great? What an awesome book. And at the back of the book, you see all this cool stuff about the ancient and noble art of tea dragon husbandry. You learn about the tea dragons, the tea Wait, dragon were they even societies. Real? Were this they is even pretty real? cool. Were, they even, were, tea, were tea dragons even real? I don't know. That's for us to find out. That's for scientists to find yeah, out. Yeah, maybe we'll look it up. And there's tea dragon leaves. And here you get to find out about their different dragons that they all have, as well as others that they didn't even get to, like the peppermint tea dragon or the hibiscus tea dragon. The Earl Grey tea dragon looks like it, it looked like it's a member of the saber tooth. That's what, what it looks a like. A great book. Evan, thanks for helping me read this book. Thank you very much. Let's do a let's do a handshake.